welcome to another edition of Talk Your Exposure. This is season two, episode five. Unfortunately, I'm not with my co-host today. He had to do he had to do some work, but that's all good. We're gonna move on. We got a former NBA player, pro basketball player. Man, he's been he's been all over the place. Mo Ager, how you doing, man? Good, good, man. What's the word, man? Hey, man, it's always good to talk to you, man. You know, we, we go we go from, uh, what was it, All-Star Weekend four or five years ago with B uh, BWT? Oh, yeah, yeah, that was 2016. Right? That was 2016 for the, for the All-Star game. So, what, what, it's just, just curious to know, what, what were you doing down here during, during that time? Was partying, having fun, or, or was there anything special you are doing down here? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I had, like, some parties scheduled uh, with uh, – <laughs> I think it was Birdman and like Ron Artest or something like that, or um, Metal World World Peace. But it, uh, it ended up getting canceled. Okay. But um, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. We, we did some partying, you know, for the most part. You know, came out there and um, you know did some things at the basketball camp as well, over with you guys. So that that was a positive, yeah, positive. Thing. So um, yeah, it, it was it was cool. You know, it was super cold. Man, I, I remember being oh my, God. <laughs> super cold. But yeah, it was cool. <laughs> You, you you're not you're not I mean you're you're familiar with the cold in terms of uh, in terms of being in Michigan and whatnot so I'm sure it wasn't anything too crazy for you. Uh yeah man it's always crazy bro. Like, <laughs> I, I, I never I never got used to the cold. I mean I, I understand I crazy in cold weather but I never let myself get used to that. I'm I'm a tropical brother you know what I'm saying so. I'm with you on that one. I'm with I'm with you on that one. Just curious to know what what you got going on right now in 2021. Oh, right now, man, shoot, man, just trying to stay healthy, bro. You know, I think that's the most important thing right now uh, for me, right? You know, just staying healthy, man. You know, just you know, just getting back to the drawing board, you know, and um, just seeing how you know, pretty much to, to maneuver in this new world we're living in. You know what I'm saying? You sure. know, finances is changing. You know, the way we spend money is going to be changing. The way we earn money is going to be changing. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, we're not really able to go too many places right now. So uh, I've just been, you know, trying to take advantage of this opportunity to, you know, pay attention to certain, you know, very important things like, you know, just like health, you know, you know, finances and, you know, and, uh, you know, things I want to do, you know, with music moving forward, um, you know, making adjustments, you know, because everything's pretty much going to be online, you know, even with the music and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's the main thing, man. And, you know, just stay focused, man. You know, enjoying myself when I can, and just um, you know, you know, just growing, bro. You know, it's been a, a, one of those times in life where it's you know, uh, self development is probably the most important thing right now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, um, you know, that's one thing I always tell people at this point in time, man. Is like this is a very crucial time to to really do some self development, work on yourself, and, uh, and really map out your plan. You know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. Talk, 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 talk a little bit about self development and self. What have you realized in twenty twenty as a whole? You know, what what are, what are some things that you that you've changed for yourself moving forward, and what are some things you're able to you know bring into the the, the I guess the new world order? Um, I would, <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, I think I think the main thing for me has been uh, you know definitely dieting. You know, I think for like you know certain things that you know um, that I've ate over the years is just it doesn't really um sit real with my body any longer. You know. Right. And so uh, I've been doing a lot of, you know, with, with that in the past six, well, almost a year or so, you know, really just kind of just like shape, you know, how I, you know, want to um, move forward with the way I eat and stuff like that, eating habits. And, uh, <clears throat> and it's been pretty good. You know, for me, I, I've been pretty much like maybe 90% vegetarian, you know, wow. the 10% you know, I left for, you know, a little wiggle room for, you know, for some other things. But um, <laughs> for the <book> part, <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, but for the most part, man, it, it's been that. And, um, you know, all, obviously, you know, spiritual stuff, you know what I mean? Just making sure your mind right, you know what I mean? Staying, you know, staying close to, you know, to your spirit, man, and, and growing that. And just, you know, just the oneness of everything, to be honest, you know what I mean? And just, I think the main thing, I, you know, you really learn is that, you know, everything is kind of connected, you know what I'm saying? So you got to figure out a way to piece the puzzles together for yourself and, um, and, and make things work out for yourself, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and be in harmony with that. For sure, for sure. I know, I know. You're talking a little bit, a little bit ago. You know, we're going to get to your basketball career in a bit, but right now, you obviously brought up your your music career and everything going on with your music right now. You know, letting things kind of plan out, letting things kind of get to where they got to get to. Where are you at right now with that? And 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 let's talk. Let's talk about you know what you're what you're trying to do with that. Uh yeah, I released two projects in uh, in November. What one in November, one in December. Um, 
I want to say December, late December. Okay. You know, just, um, just stuff on SoundCloud, um, about 40, about 40 songs. Just 40 songs is like, they're pretty much like mixtapes. It's like, a, I treated it like a mixtape, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's free music for people to stream. So go to SoundCloud, Mobile Egger, type in plays, plays, P-L-A-Y-S, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, to, uh, I got actually two, two separate playlists. I got one playlist called, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, it's plays, and then the second one is um, lost treasure tapes. You know what I'm saying? But they they're on the same page, so a lot of dope stuff, man. Check it out, man. Dope beats, dope rhymes, okay. you know, the music. So yeah, check it out, man. Go ahead and stream that, man. It's free. Okay. So, Most definitely. <laughs> hey, everybody, listen to this. Make sure you guys go stream it, man. We we, we want to try to get those views and likes up as much as possible for him. Yeah, um, man. Yeah, check it out. Most definitely. Most deaf. And I want to, I want to, I want to dive right into your 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 university career, man. But before we get to that, though, I want to ask you, who was interested in you? You know, leading up to recruitment. Um, we had you know Michigan. We had uh, interest from Michigan, uh, Marquette, um, Missouri, mm-hmm. um, UConn. Um, those were the main ones, you know, for the most part. Right. Yeah. Sorry, but b- before we want to get to that, actually, I-, I I messed up on one question. I know I saw a picture with you guard- guarding Kobe and whatnot. You know, obviously Kobe was was a big influence to a lot of basketball players to this day and stuff. You know, what what was it like? What what was it like for you when when Kobe Bryant passed away in in twenty in early twenty twenty? Man, um, it's probably almost a year ago now. Man, it still seems like it. Um, still doesn't seem real to be completely honest with you. Uh, right. Me and my guys, we were over in uh, Saudi Arabia, and uh, we I was actually doing a camp out there. A basketball camp, and uh, it was just, it was crazy because I was in a car with uh me, my partner, and uh, a couple. Uh, I don't know if you remember Dante Green from Syracuse. He was there, um, and then another guy from I, he played with the Knicks. I forgot his name. But he played over. He's playing over in Saudi Arabia. So we was just in the car, man. It was it hit hard, bro. You know that whole period in time just hit hard, man. You know just between that and COVID, kind of just had you know Kobe and COVID. You know what I'm saying? Kind of just just going back you know, back to back, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, um, we started off the year with that. So that was kind of tough, you know what I'm saying? You know, that was a real tough one for the basketball world. And this is like, just like anybody else, this just still don't seem real, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, you know, Mo- shout out to Cole, man. Most definitely. And, and honestly, you know, I talk about this often. It wasn't, I mean, Kobe made a big impact in, in, in the basketball world in itself, but Gigi, you know, you know, rest in peace to Gigi as well, who would have made a huge impact in the WNBA, man. Like, I feel like she would have, she would have done something crazy if she, if she was still here and she would have been, she would have been the Kobe of the WNBA. You, you feel the same way? Uh, Yeah, man. She was a great player, man, for her age. Definitely, man. You know, of course, I think she would have been a great um, college player, great pro player. Um, you know, you know, this just the level of you know women's basketball is is getting better and better. Period. You know what I'm saying? Like, sure. like sure. they out there looking like they fire. But uh, yeah, man, it's, it's really unfortunate, man. And, and, you know, it's sad that you know that that to happen. You know, but um, you know, you know, it's, I guess it's his life, bro. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I think yeah, I think Kobe's um, you know, his legacy is on. You know, is always going to be you know one to remember, man. I know I. I He's he's definitely one of my top top players for sure for in sure. history. For sure. you, do you want do you, do you mind touching up on what it was like to guard Kobe? Uh, it was I mean it was tough tough man Kobe uh, tough competitor you know what I mean he, he was if you play you know he was trying to get to it you know he really he never took plays off which was something special about him you know what I'm saying you know even if he wasn't involved in the play um he was still you know trying to get the ball to score. <laughs> that mm-hmm. was his thing. You know, he was trying to get the rock and, get, you know, put that ball in the basket. But uh, it, it's a, it was an honor, bro. It's an honor to be able to, to you know, tell my grandkids and, and my kids, I got to have kids first. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, figure that out. But um, tell my kids, like, look, man, I, grab, you know, I played against Kobe Bryant. I played against some of these other greats as well. So, so um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's the closest thing to Michael Jordan, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to just as far as game, you know what I'm saying, game and mentality. You know, I feel like there's nobody that that got came as close as as Kobe as far as, like, you know, 
people that you can really compare Jordan to. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, people compare LeBron to Jordan, but it's like, is it really a comparison? Like, you, you did what I'm saying? Like, they're, yeah. they're two different players, in my opinion. Yeah, Kobe and Jordan are, are similar players. They're the same player, damn it. For sure. You know for sure. No, I, I definitely agree with you on that one. I want, I want you to hit that one right on the nose, man. And and a lot of people, a lot of people want to want to make that argument and want to make that comparison all the time. And I was like, they're not the same. You can't you can't really compare Michael to 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 LeBron when LeBron six eight six nine and Michael was what six three six four maybe six five. You know what I mean? So it's a little different when. Like six six. Yeah, like six six. Six six. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But your LeBron's still six nine. You know what I mean? You know. <laughs> Almost more like a Magic Johnson, you know, a little bit more athletic Magic, or a lot more athletic Magic, Magic Johnson. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would compare her to Magic before I compare her to, to, um, to Mike. For Although sure. I do think LeBron is probably probably the second second greatest all time, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, think this, I would say MJ, MJ, A, LeBron, 1B. And then, okay. you know, we can play with the two, three, four, five still. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna go ahead and put both of them at one. But I know you didn't ask me that, but you know, I just. Hey, we, hey, we, 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 we love, we love having these conversations. So uh, opinions matter, man. You know, definitely. Yeah, and, by, and by the way, shout out to shout out to Michael Jordan. You know, happy birthday, Michael Jordan. You know, what I'm saying happy birthday to him. I know over there it's a day later, but <laughs> here and here it's still it's still uh, uh, February 17th. I think it is. Yes, yeah, February 17th. Uh, but yeah, so let, let let let's touch back on on your your college career for a second. You know, I would I want to talk about you know you you mentioned you you had Michigan, you had Michigan State, uh, you had a couple other schools as well. What was it about Michigan State that intrigued you so much to to go over there? Oh, uh, I think at that time, man, you know, it was you know they was going to Final Fours, they was winning championships. You know, Tom Izzo was was you know making a, a huge impact on on the sports world, not only just college, you know what I mean? Uh, I feel like my mom really loved Michigan State, you know what I'm saying? I really enjoyed myself when I went up there and visit. You know, like, you know, I, I had a good time. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I made friends there and spent time with them. And uh, spent time at Michigan State and just, it, I just fell in love with school, you know what I'm saying? More so even just the, the basketball aspect. The basketball aspect is amazing, of course, but Man, I really just loved the school, bro. Like, you know, the college itself was 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 fun, man. I made a lot of good friends. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I really enjoyed college. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say I enjoyed class, but I enjoyed college. <laughs> I enjoyed, you know what I mean, going to the dorms and, you know, hanging out with people, you know, chilling with chicks, watching movies with chicks and you know what I mean? Just hey, I, I enjoyed a lot of stuff in college. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That was just, you know, um I'm, ha- I'm happy I had that experience, you know, in Michigan State was was a was a perfect experience because it it was so diverse too, you know what I'm saying? It just wasn't just all black people, you know, we had white, you know what I mean, Asians. It was a, a well, real, um, you know, multiverse uh, college, you know what I'm saying? And I know a lot of universities are like that, but uh, it was something about Michigan State, man, you know. Um, it was just, you know, it felt right, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like overall oh, I made the right decision, you know what I'm saying? And that, and that's what, that's what a lot of kids, you know, that's what, that's what a lot of kids in general right now need to kind of understand is, you know, it's not always about going to the big time schools. It's always, it's always about what, what, what fits for you. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, I feel like I talked to a lot of kids and they're like, they want to go to Duke. They want to go to UNC or they want to go here. They want to go there. But then in reality, you know, you have three guys who are playing their position already and chances are the freshmen, they're not going to play. Do you, do you agree that you just go wherever it fits for you? Or do you, or do you think that you should still try to rock up with, with best school? Um, I, I think it's a combination of both. You know, I think that, uh, you know, even if, you know, the, uh, you have a star player, you know, he probably won't stay there longer than his, his sophomore year anyway. Right. You know, it probably would be good to go play under a year under, you know, a, 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 a potential first round draft pick, you know what I mean, learn from him. And then, you know, you slide right into that, that space. Or, you know what I mean, if, and then it all depends. You know, this is this is a new day. Like the older, <laughs> the older days, it's like you kind of knew that. Guys are going to stay three years, maybe three, four. You know what I mean? Guys are more, you know, prone to stay a little bit longer. And you have to play, you know, uh, behind people a lot longer. Now it's kind of like, you know, the top players is one and out, you know, one and done, two years and done. So uh, it, it all depends. But I think I think ultimately you should always go somewhere where your game is going to be, you know what I'm saying, um, you know, uh, a, a good companion for your game. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to go nowhere just – just to go, you don't want to go somewhere that's going to actually allow you a bit of a shine as a player. 
You get what I'm saying? You know, sure. there's a lot of players that go to schools. Oh, it's a big name school, but it's like, you know what I mean? That style didn't necessarily fit you. Right. I know a lot of players who, who could have went to certain college, colleges. They, I feel like they would have thrived a lot more you know, instead, instead of um, where they chose to go. Sure. You know, a lot of people make choices and decisions because, you know, you know, their family members may tell them to. It, 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 and it happens, you know what I mean? Especially once you, um, you know, on that recruiting circuit, man. You know, you know, it's a lot of pressure for the kid because at the end of the day, it's like, you know, he's been pulled in so many different directions. Yeah. And um, that was probably the toughest part, you know what I mean? It's just a, a, a it's just recruiting circuit in general, you know what I'm saying? It's just kind of it, – it, it turned into a business way too fast for me, you know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure, and that that's I'm glad you touched up on that as well. You know, and and I want to I want to get on that one later about the business of business aspect of it because something happened the other day. But right now, I want I want to talk. To, so I want to touch up on and keep on track with with Michigan State right now. What was it like, you know, for uh, playing for Tom Izzo? Oh, uh, it, it was intense, man. It was intense. It was uh, uh it was tough. You know what I'm saying? It was it was. It was fun. It was definitely fun. I had a lot of fun playing for Izzo, to be honest with you. Right. Um, had a lot of, you know, uh, <laughs> a lot of tough moments, you know what I'm saying? But right. uh, for the most part, uh, it, it was definitely intense. I, I think that's probably the best word I can give you. You know what I'm saying? Sure. It was really intense. You know what I'm saying? You got to be on your toes. You know, Izzo was really um, an intense dude. And yeah. I think that, like, you know, he's probably going to be that way until, you know, forever. <laughs> but, I think, you know, for the most part, man, it, it was – it was good playing for Izzo, man. He, he definitely challenged us in, in a lot of ways. And I feel like, you know, a lot of us, you know, who, who actually uh, accepted his challenge and went out there and, and, you know, competed, and, you know what I'm saying? And, and it, it made it that much better. You know, it was just something about, like, I don't want to say proving him wrong, but, like, he would challenge you and you were like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You go out there and do what you got to do. Yeah. And, then, you know, and then y'all pretty much celebrate at the end. And so it, it's kind of like a um, – it's it's a, it's, a, it's one of his tactics, and, it's, and I feel like it's one of the reasons he's been successful for some for so so many years, you know, coaching, because he uh, he knows how to you know build his players. And you know, I'm actually um proud to see him actually transition from you know our era of players to to this era of players. Mm -hmm. It seems like he's made a good transition with with being able to you know kind of like work with these these younger these newer newer, newer generation guys versus yeah. us. You know what I'm saying? You know, it was it was a bit different for us. You know what I'm saying? Like I think that um. For him to make those adjustments, man, you know, just says how great the coach he really is, you know. What 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 was he able to teach you? You know, obviously, obviously you 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 know, like we both like you have said a little bit ago, you said that he'd been able to adjust and been able to maneuver himself into today's game compared to last year or the older generation stuff like that. What made him such a great coach, and what was he able to teach you? I, I tell you, I mean, I've been saying this for years, but I think the main thing he taught me was like, it's a dog eat dog world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm a, I'm a positive person. I have a pretty good life. I have a great life, actually. You know what I'm saying? But I do see um, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. kind of like, you, know, you kind of like would like for it not to be that way, but, you know, it's, it is what it is, right? You feel me? For sure. Not to say that I don't see the beauty of the world in some of the wonderful things sure. that goes on in the world, but it, 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 it's, it, it's kind of proven like it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. So what that means is, you know, it can mean whatever you want it to mean, but for me, it meant okay. That means that I still had to, um, I had to be uh, able to learn how to maneuver in this world. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying I feel like that was more important than basketball. Yeah, able sure. to truly maneuver in this world where, um, you know, only the strong really truly survive. You know what I'm saying? Like strong and smart. Yeah, for sure. You, what I'm saying? you could be, you could be strong and survive, <laughs> and um, you know. But you can be smart and, you know, you can survive a little bit longer, too. So it's like, you know, smart and, and, and strength, man. They, you know, intelligence and strength, man, and, you know, they, they should go hand in hand. But uh, that's, that's pretty much what that taught me, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the basketball stuff was kind of inevitable. But, you know, just recognizing that the world was kind of like, you know, something. Will Smith said the best, man. I feel like, you know, um, he, he said something along the lines of just, you know, give yourself the best chance to survive out here in this world, you know what I mean? There's there's so many different things that that can be obstacles for us, you know what I'm saying? And he said the worst thing you can do is kick yourself in the balls. You dig what I'm saying? And, yep. and make making the path a little harder for yourself. And I think that's what happens a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, people and, and all of us are kind of guilty for blaming 
things around us for certain things that happen and, and people yeah. and circumstances and stuff like that. And rightfully so. But at least if that is the case, uh, make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do, not to, um, you know, hurt yourself. Like, you know what I'm saying? Give yourself the best chance to to win out here. Well and, um, you know, we, you know, I feel like we, you know, and this is a, a good lesson for for young people, you know what I mean? It's just, just for self-sabotaging, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things yeah. that um, that's a lot. We hold ourselves back by self-sabotage, you know what I'm saying? And, and when you when you really look at it, you know what I'm saying, you know, you can blame anything. It's a lot of situations that happen, but for the most part, you know, you end up having more favor when you uh, take blame and the responsibility for the things you do. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, give yourself the best chance, you know what I'm saying, and don't don't screw yourself by doing things that's harmful for you, you know what I'm saying, that, that's harmful to you. For sure. And that, 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 that was the best way to put it, very, very well said. I got I got to admit, man, that was very well said, and, and we appreciate that. I'm sure all the kids on here will, that listen to this will definitely appreciate what you just said as well. Uh, one, thing, one thing, you know, now that I want to transition now a little bit to, to you know, your first year over at Michigan. Uh, what was what what was that like, and 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 what was that like? Now you know you're playing Division One, playing with with some with some future NBA guys, yourself included. Uh, what was that like for you? You know, practices like what was all that stuff like for you? You know, to to get you ready for what you wanted to get to. Um, man, it was fun, bro. Man, we had a good time, man. Like me, Alan Anderson, Shannon Brown, Kelvin Tolbert, like Paul Davis. Like I don't know, dude, we just had a good time, man. Like we we did a lot of joking. Yeah, but uh, we we knew each other so well, bro. I think it was dope because a lot of us, you know, we stuck around with each other for a while. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. uh, played with Allen for three years. Played with you know Kelvin Tober for three years. Chris Hill for three years. You know what I'm saying? Paul, four years. Shannon, three years. So it's like, you know, it, it gave us some time to to all become like we we was cool. Like our, our squad, we was all cool. We didn't have nobody on our team who really just disliked anybody from what I remember. I don't know how it is nowadays, but I do remember us kind of like being like, I don't want to, you know, oh, we look brothers and family, like, but we, we were, you know, we were tight, you know what I'm saying? We were, we right. were pretty cool, you know what right. I'm saying? We got along, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. We kind of had our cliques, you know what I'm saying? People hung out with certain people more, but I think for the most part, man, um, playing with those guys was, was dope, you know what I'm saying? It made me better, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody um, that you named, like, well, you didn't name anybody, but, um, you know, some of those guys, man, they, you know, they, they put they put work in, you know what I'm saying? Like, they wasn't afraid to actually put in extra work and, um, you know, to help each other, you know what I'm saying? I, we didn't have, as far as I know, I don't remember having any, like, jealousy issues, anything like that, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I enjoyed my guy. We didn't get a chance to, you know, do the things I know we could have done, but my experience was amazing, man, so I ain't true. That's what's up. That's what's up. 2006. You know, transition now a little bit more to, to your NBA career. 2006, you get drafted 28th overall, the first round pick by Dallas Mavericks. You know, they, they, they have a good squad over there. I think at the time the coach was Avery Johnson or it was, it was uh, uh, Donnie Nelson. It was Avery Johnson, no? No, it was Avery. Avery. Avery Johnson, over there you got you got Dirk, you know what I'm saying? You have uh, Jason Terry, you have uh, Posner Sabatza, who's a Raptor favorite. Uh, you, have, you have a lot of guys that are over there right now or on that, on that squad. What were your expectations going into training camp, and what what, what did the, the that organization tell you? You know, going in there, what did they get you get, get you prepared for? Mm, I don't remember if they told me a lot, but um, uh, you know, I think I had some good players, man. Uh, a lot of good players, but some good veterans, man. Like you know, Jerry Stackhouse was my guy. You know, mm -hmm. spoke to him not too long ago. Spoke to Josh Howard not too long ago. Um, those were like like my two two vets that you know, kind of like really. Had my back majority of the time, real dudes. Uh, I think the main thing was uh, <laughs> it, it was the total opposite from college. You know what I'm saying? Like I just told you about how you know how tight knit we were as a group. You know, I, you know we we all hung out, and it wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying with the Mavericks? You know what I'm saying? It was in the league period. You know what I'm saying? Like it was definitely clickish. You had like one or two people you hang with on the team, but that family environment it wasn't as, the same as you know college. You know. Right. Rightfully so, you know, guys got wives, guys got, you know, so many different things that they're doing outside of, you know, just the, the team sure. uh, the environment. So it, it's, it's definitely a lot different. Um, you know, I think um, being able to be uh, self-responsible, I, I want to say, what's the best thing? 
accountable. I probably the word, you know, you know, being accountable is was was one of those things where it was I want to say it was a bit tougher just because you didn't necessarily have people on you like you did in college. It's like in college, you're like, okay, we yeah, hurry up, you know, people knocking on your door and you know what I'm saying, coach calling you like, nah, not in the NBA. It was like, all right, hey, you know where you're supposed to be at a certain time. If you're there, you're there. It just you just really had to be accountable, you know what I'm saying? Well, definitely. You know? Yeah, I, I was I was gonna say I, w- I wanted to touch up a little bit on on Jerry Stackhouse. You know, I had a I had a chance to uh, go to one of the Raptors um, open houses when Jerry Stackhouse was, was one of the Raptors coaches, and he just the way he spoke, you could just tell he lit, lit up the room. You could just tell he was a good veteran. You could tell he had that good persona to him. Did he teach you anything, or or, or what was some things that he taught you, or, or was it better yet, was he even your vet? Yeah, yeah, Stack was my guy. Like I said, I talked to Stack on. Um... Two months ago. Okay. About two months ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We talked. We talked for a minute. But um, I think Stack was just kind of, as far as like what he taught. I think that Stack kind of just um, believe it or not, man. I think Stack admired you know the, the fact you know my toughness. You know what I'm saying? Right. I think he really admired that. And um, uh, I don't think that he was one of those guys to kind of like, oh, hey, Rook, you supposed to do this? Nah, he was Stack was just cool, bro. To be honest with you, you know he was one of those guys that was. You know, he intimidated a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> I think that he he, he took he took a liking to me because I, I wasn't really intimidated by him. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he, you know, he just, he took a liking to that. You know what I'm saying? He really respected that. Um, you know, we, you know, he was always cool after that, you know. Mm-hmm. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Playing, playing, uh, watching Dirk. You know, that's, that's somebody that I've, I've always loved a basketball player. You know, obviously a lot of, a lot of players have liked him as well. And they, they talk so highly of, of Dirk and stuff. What was your experience like watching Dirk play? You know, whether it being a teammate, what was what was he like as a teammate? You know, just talk about Dirk a little bit. Uh, uh Dirk, man, jokester. You know what I'm saying? He's really consistent. You know what I mean? Even with his jokes, <laughs> like everything. Really, about- he's, he, he's funny. Really. Oh yeah. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wow. But but Dirk is is he's a system. He's a systematic type person. He he, he had a system for himself. Like he had a, like I said, like. <laughs> You know, he knew when he was gonna crack jokes. He knew when he was gonna be in the gym. He had his his his, um, his shooting coach with him every every after every practice. Right. Um, he definitely spent more time in the gym more than everybody. Um, uh, I think that uh, he, like he had a great personality, man. He he was extremely humble. You know what I'm saying? Like he he was he was one of those guys. He he would crack jokes on you, but uh, it was always cool. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't never like a um he never made you feel. Or try he never tried to belittle anybody, you know what I'm saying? But he will, you know, he was very, you know, um, vocal with certain things, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, I, yeah. I I I I I just I just found him. I just, found a, I just, I just get buckets on him. He's. <laughs> I was gonna say I found I found it kind of funny that you know you use the word belittle with him. The man seven foot tall. He he's he's making everybody look small. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. But um, but I, w- I want I want to touch a little bit about the playoffs, man. You got you guys had a you guys were first in in, in the Western Conference, I think it was. You guys run into Golden State that year, the We Believe team. Uh, you know, obviously, obviously that was tough for everybody to watch, especially Dallas fans, especially for people that were on Dallas. But what did like, I mean that that young team of of Golden State? I don't know if you if you feel comfortable talking about it or not. But can you talk about what the, what the locker room was like going into that series, and then what the locker room was like after that series? Um, the locker room was pretty much the same. I mean, we had a great locker room, you know what I mean? We had some great veterans. You know, everybody on our team was – we didn't have nobody on our team who just wasn't, uh, you know, um, everybody was good. I remember that that was, that was a very good year, you know what I mean? I think that uh, we, we had the best record in the league. I think that's the second – seventh best record in NBA history. Wow. Um, we had a, an amazing locker room. We just ran into a, 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 a team that outmatched us. <laughs> Fair enough. It wasn't necessarily that we was in the locker room like, oh, I'm arguing. Nah, it wasn't none of that. You know, we was doing what we did to get there. Right. It just right. We ran into a, a we ran into a team that that was just was was a, was a matchup problem for us. You know what I'm saying? Fair enough. Fair enough. And I'm sure I'm sure obviously at the same time as well. Like you know, going into that going into the playoffs, you guys were were favored to win because you guys came. You know, you guys lost in the final the year before that. You guys were definitely favored to win that year. So when you guys lost, I was I was shocked. I was. Whoa, I was stunned. But I want I want I want to dive in a little bit more. You know, obviously you 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 transition now, you you move on to New Jersey. 
I think you moved on to New Jersey, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, you play, you playing with, uh, you know, Richard Jefferson, Vince Carter. You know, uh, you played with Jason Kidd. Uh, you, you got to play with a lot of a lot of good guys over there. What was that like playing with Jason Kidd and Vince Carter, man? I've been a, obviously, as you know, being from Toronto, being from Canada, we yeah. have the Vince Carter effect here all over the place. You know, everybody that talks about basketball is all Vince Carter, Vince Carter, Vince Carter, Vince Carter. Can you touch up on what, on what Vince Carter was like, and can you also, after that, elaborate on Jason Kidd as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this quick. Jay Kidd, he was our – I got traded for Jason Kidd, so I didn't play with him. Oh. <laughs> so, but what I would say is uh, – like, yeah, now, Vince was – Vince, Vince, Vince Carter, skillfully, man, is definitely <laughs> – like, people talked about how much – how athletic he was, but, like, man, the way he passed the ball was – Phenomenal, bro. He was a great passer, dog. Like I don't think he got enough credit how far how good of good of a passer he was, man. He he set a lot of guys up. Right. He had a pretty pretty decent handle. You know what I'm saying? Like you wasn't gonna take the ball from him. Um, you know he'd take all. You know he, he had his periods where he he act like he didn't jump the way he did, but you know then he had the times where you know he he show you know Vince sanity. I think the only thing about Vince is like I just don't think he was as as inspired when I was there. You know, with that team, you know, I think that um, he was kind of already, you know, one foot out the door a bit. Fair you enough. know what I'm saying? But he, he still showed up and played. But I don't think that he was um, – I ain't going to say I think. I know he wasn't as motivated, you know. Uh, Fair. During those two years I played with him. You know, I think that, uh, you know, when, when Jason Kidd left, that kind of took something out of, out of him, you know, because I think Jason Kidd – he was, he was really complimentary for Vince. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, to take away somebody who, like, made you better, it, it was tough for him, I think. You know what I'm saying? So I think once once that happened, you know, he kind of, you know, he tanked it a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. But uh, other than that, man, Vince is probably one of my favorite NBA friends. You know what I'm saying? Really? Sure. Yeah. That's, that, that's, what, that's what's up. He, he's, he actually just started a, a scholarship fund here in Toronto as well. So shout out to Vince for that, man. You know, shout out to him for, for still giving back to the kids, even though, you know, after his – uh, departure from Toronto and everything, you know, the, the Toronto just the, him and him and Toronto will always have a special bond. I feel like in my in, in my mind. But I want I want I want to you know obviously after after New Jersey, you you uh, you traveled to Spain, you played overseas for a bit. What was it like now playing playing in a, in a country that doesn't speak speak your language after playing in in uh, the best league in the world? Uh, it was man, it was a huge adjustment because it's like um, you know, I think my first two or three months there, you know, I was pretty much trying to recover from a pretty much broke ankle. Yeah. So it was like, that, that was tough just trying to get back on my feet basketball-wise. I was, I was a bit out of shape, you know what I'm saying? And right. It is practicing. I think I think the tough part about, you know, the um, you know, those ladies, they play practice two days a week, two, pra two practices, yeah. a, um, sorry, two practices a day. And I was like, man, I wasn't really, you know, fond of that, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I ain't did this since college, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, but other than that, man, uh, it, it was definitely an adjustment, man. It was just, it was a bit unorganized, you know what I mean? The team I played with, you know what I'm saying? It was a, a lot of um, things that, you know, kind of just was very disruptive as far as, you know, passport situations, you know, import players. Mm -hmm. You know, it just made it really hard for me to focus and, and you know, get on track basketball-wise, you know, um, playing for the, for the team that I played for. But uh, over, my Spain experience overall was was great. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I can't wait to go back and, you know, spend a month there and, and uh, travel Spain some more. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it was it was a, an amazing place, man. Like, I, I liked it there a lot. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. I got to ask you, though, are you, are you a foodie? Do you do you, do you go travel, uh, try different different cuisines? Yeah, 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 for sure. Got to. So when you were, when you were in Spain, what was something that you tried? Man, I was smacking everything, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they had dinner at night, you know, so they had, you know, the the, 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 the egg, the cheese eggs and sausages with the Papa's fritas, you know what I'm Damn. saying? Like, Damn. Yeah, yeah, I used to hit crazy. Um, what else I used to eat over there? Man, that's, man, yeah, it was fire, bro. I, don't, I can't even think of all the food. Yeah, I was, I used to, I used to smash American food over there, too. I was hitting, yeah, it was, it was, it was good. You definitely, you, you definitely yeah, want to bet. Over there, I'm like, yo, I, I, I wish I still had this. <laughs> I'm about to say, you, you definitely weren't a vegetarian when you were over there. <laughs> Hell no. I'm close. <laughs> I'm close, bro. 
I feel that. I feel that. Any other any other spots in, in uh, you know around the world that you that you would that you'd recommend to try? Uh, <laughs> I will definitely say uh, man, 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 that's a good question. Everywhere I went, I mean, I could recommend. You know, I think London was cool. You know, Paris. You know, what I'm saying the Bahamas was fire. It all depends on what you like. Fair enough. You know, what I'm saying? like you, the Middle East was 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 a different experience. You know, I went over there the, uh, this time last year, actually. Well, look, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, Egypt was 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 okay. Bali is is dope. Yeah, I would definitely recommend Bali. Um, Vietnam for sure. I would definitely recommend people come to Vietnam and, and check it out. That's um, cool. China was cool, man. Um, Thailand is pretty I, cool. Um, I, I think it's safe to say that you like to travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've traveled a lot. So it's like, even when this happened, you know, I was already, before this happened, you know, I think I traveled seven, six, seven countries before that. You know, I think I was in China, Thailand, uh, Saudi, Egypt, Bali, um, yeah, that was like four, yeah, something like that. So, you know, I, I got a lot of traveling in before they shut us down, but uh, yeah, you got to travel, man, whenever you can. Most definitely, most definitely. I got, I, I, I got a couple more questions for you related to your NBA career before we get to the so some quick hitters at the end. First one I got to ask you, though, is who was your toughest check when you were in the NBA? Uh, I think Kevin Martin was, was really hard, hard to guard. Yeah. You know, he was really... Just real slippery, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he's just one of those players where it's like he can shoot the ball and make you follow him. <laughs> like, like you make he makes you follow him, bro. Like, but you 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 wouldn't think that he could shoot the ball with his, with his jumpers with his the way his form is though. <laughs> it goes in. You right? Yeah, you can make two or three. You like you don't really. You're right. You're right. Who 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 are you a fan of? Other than you know, you mentioned earlier you were you were a, Mike, a Michael and and Kobe fan, but who who else were you a fan of in the NBA growing up? Um, man, Isaiah Thomas, Joe Dumars, Grant Hill, Penny, um, AI, Ray, Jeez. Kobe. Mm -hmm. Um, who else I like? I like Rick Hamilton. Um, who was uh, Sean Kemp, Mahmoud Abdul Roof, okay, Stefan Marbury. Uh, he cool too. Yeah, he's like a lot of players. T Mac, T Mac was cool. Man, T Mac didn't get enough respect, man. T Mac didn't get enough respect. In my opinion. Yeah. La last question I want to ask you with the NBA before we get to our quick hitters is. Who's one person in the NBA that you would give regular buckets to? And every time you see him on, on, on the statue, you say, man, I'm about to give this guy 30, 20, 25, 15, whatever it might be. You know you're giving um, a walking bucket to him. Who, who, I used to give buckets to, um, what's my man's name? Uh, he used to play for UCLA. Uh, he played for UCLA. He played for the Pistons. Uh, uh, it's on my tongue. It's on my tongue. I can't think of it right now. Damn. I can't. Um, I want. I want. Wow. I, 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 I want to say, I, I say Lindsey Hunter, maybe. Nah, man. Uh, it's in UCLA. Oh, um, okay, never mind. He's a year, year year younger than me. Um, he played with the Pistons. He's a, he's a good shooter. A great defender. Um. Up, bro, that's crazy. I can't even. Um, and we'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll come um, back. We'll, we'll we'll come back to that. You know what I'm saying? If if uh, if you if you if you remember who uh, what the name or, or who it was, definitely definitely shout it out when when you when you know when you know. <laughs> all right. So first first quick hitter I gotta ask you is top five movies of all time. <laughs> Man, that's that's impossible. Top five movies of all time. Your, your top five movies of all time. I have movies. Man. Let's do it like this. This is basketball. So let's let's do basketball. It's, right. it's going to be a lot hard for me to do the other one. So I'm going <laughs> to go ahead. I'm, I'm going to run off five basketball movies. I'm going to say Above the Rim, 
He got game. Mm-hmm. Um, blue chips. Um, Sunset Park. Um, did I say he got game? Yeah, he said he got game. Um, he got game. Blue chips. Sunset Park. Coach Carter was cool. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where, where did love of basketball fit in that? Uh, they, yeah, probably like bottom, bottom, bottom half of the 10. I'll probably put them like 10 or something like that. What they they admit the top 10, though. You what about I mean? white man can't jump? Nah. Nah. All right. It's classic, though. But that's not really like hoop, hoop movie. You know what I'm saying? It's, that's a basketball movie, but like, it's kind of like Blue Chips is basketball. That's a basketball movie. Like, you know what I mean? Hoogers and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Fair enough. I mean, white man can jump is still kind of like, you know, about a bunch of other shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fair enough, fair enough. I know I know you're into music right now, so I got to ask you, who's who your top five artists of all time? Um, shit. Rappers? Anything. Rappers, singers, R&B singers, whatever. Pop guys. Marvin Gaye. Ooh, can't go wrong with a little Marvin Gaye. Yeah, Marvin Gaye is definitely up there for me. Um, uh, I like Eminem. You know what I'm saying? Oh. People don't you know, disrespect him lately, but uh, <laughs> I like him. Um, Dr. Dre. Okay. Mm. Um, Andre 3000 is, is pretty dope. Um, Tupac. Jeez. He was a Tupac fan. Yeah. You know, I, I love Snoop growing up. I loved um, Old Thugs and Harmony. Um, wow. Um, a lot of good ones out there. A lot of legends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of, you know. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I got I got two more I got two more for you. First one I gotta ask you is if you could collaborate with three artists, who would it be? Right now? Right now. Uh man, I'll do something with Sean. Okay. I'd love to do something with Drake. And um uh, eh, we'll track with J. Cole, why not? And that that would be dope, man. If you get Drake and J. Cole with you as well, shoot. So I'm I'm, I'm definitely gonna listen. I'm listening to that regardless, but I'm listening to I'm listening to you regardless. But damn, if you get J. Cole drinking yourself on that one, bro, that would be tough. That'd be yeah, tough. yeah, yeah. I like I like those guys. And if I just had to pick three, like all right, we'll get get two of you. Right, 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 right. There's right, a lot right. of other people that you know I kind of always wanted to work with. But. What 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 about what about? What about if there is any NBA NBA rappers that you could collab with, who would you want to collab with? Uh, Dan Cole. Mm-hmm. Um, Iman Shumpert is Cole. Mm-hmm. Um, JaVale McGee, he's he's a dope producer. A writer. <laughs> I'll rock with him, too. JaVale McGee. <laughs> yeah. And fi- fi- final question i got to ask you is, we ask all of our guests this question to finish off the show, but we gotta we got to ask... Who is someone that you like to have on Talk Your Exposure? But here's the kicker, though. You got to help us get him on the show. Who was that? No, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Who is someone that you would want to have to see on the show? But the kicker is you got to help us get him on the show. <laughs> yeah, that's a good kicker. Uh, who would you want on your show? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, like, you probably would want somebody like, uh, I don't know, maybe, like, uh, you from Toronto. I don't know some legendary. Get like somebody like Dame and Stoudemire, somebody. You know what I'm saying? Just take some some completely out of the out of the you know Dame and Stoudemire. He was around when you know when the, when he first got popped off of y'all. When, you know when y'all first got going. You know him, Camby and those guys. Ooh, Marcus Camby, man, you get Marcus Camby. Hey, if, if if you could connect oh, us, if, if if you could connect us with him, man, that would be dope, man. That'd be dope for real. I mean, mm-hmm. sorry, sorry to put you on the spot, but hey, man, we we like I said, we asked all our guests the same question at the end. You know what I'm saying? Trying to trying to see what we can do. Honestly, if, even if, even if there was a way you can get us uh, connected with Alan Anderson, you know he's a former Raptor. You know he was definitely dope when he was here too. 
Yo, Belay, Mo Pete. We got Mo Pete. Hey man, like I like I said, any 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 one of those guys, you know what I'm saying, would definitely be great on the show, and and we definitely hope that you can help us with that. Final final thing I want to ask you is, what are your social media handles? Where can people find you? Where can they follow you? Where can they find all your music? Everything in general, let them know. Yeah. So, um, I just posted on my um my Twitter page, the my, the Moegger Beat Club. You know, it's a, uh, it's a production page that I put together for for up and coming artists. You know, reasonable pricing, um, music production. You know, to give you give, give yourself an opportunity to work with a Grammy nominated musician, um, producer such as myself, and um, that's on my Twitter page, which is M O E A G E R. So go on there, man. Check out some some fire beats for your project, that's and you um, you know, reach out to me if you if you want to do some more exclusive things. But um, yeah, got the Morgan Beat Club. That's on my Twitter, M O E A G E R. Um, you know, my SoundCloud is is. Mo Ager, A M O E A G E R, <laughs> and then type in plays, Mo Ager, and then plays, and you can check out my new project. Um, sure. You know, my IG, everything the same, man. Mo Ager, man. You know, just keep it all consistent, man. M O E A G E R. Mo, follow me, and um, yeah, man, we get a cracker. Mo, definitely. Hey, Mo, man, one more time. I want to, I want to thank you for all your time. You know, thank you for, for coming on the show today, giving us some insight, giving us some insight about your career and what you went through as, as an NBA guy as well as a, as a collegiate player. Man, we thank you so much for, for taking the time, and we hope that the kids are able to uh, uh, continue to listen to you and, and, and be inspired by you. We, we, we wish you nothing but success. We wish you nothing but good health, and we wish you nothing nothing but, uh, but continued success. And we hope to see you on the court one day soon. Appreciate it, man. Much love, bro. Good luck to everybody, man. Hope everybody continue to stay healthy and, um, you know, get to it, man. Work hard, play hard, and um, stay stay strong, stay mentally strong, stay spiritually strong, and um, make it happen. Love it, man. Appreciate you one more time, and, and all the best to you, man. For sure, bro.